All right, welcome to Facial Trauma Part 1. This is the first of four in a series of the best of facial trauma. And to get things started, this is going to be the introductory lecture. Introducing myself, I'm an Albuquerque native, and I went to the University of New Mexico and then obtained my dental degree at Creighton University in Omaha, Nebraska. Did my oral surgery training at Cook County Hospital in Chicago from 1978 to 1981. And uh, my nickname while there was Trauma Traub. And since that time, uh, I've been back in Albuquerque and had a general practice of oral surgery, including significant amounts of facial trauma. The topics we'll be discussing here include mandibular fractures, mid-face fractures, also known as Lefort or ZMC fractures, gunshot wounds to the face, temporal mandibular joint injuries, dental alveolar injuries, facial soft tissue injuries, and then complex facial injury cases. So just to get your attention, this is actually a true oral surgery case. Why? Because the tip of the knife is in the mouth, and that makes it an oral surgery case. And this here is another more common, uh, or the most common, of facial fractures. This is a mandibular fracture. And if you look closely at the x-ray, uh, he has a Band-Aid right over where his left mandibular fracture is. And it corresponds to that which, which is seen on his PA skull film. Mid-face fractures obviously are in the middle of the face. And they come in a variety of uh, degrees ranging from uh, type 1 to type 3 with increasing severity of morbidity and mortality. On this particular slide, you'll notice here that there is in, in A, this is just a horizontal fracture of the alveolar ridge, not including the floor of the nose. And then if you move to the second uh, slide, uh, B, this is the true Lefort 1 fracture, similar to what we do when we're doing facial osteotomies to move people's jaws around. Uh, slide C is a pyramidal fracture of the mid-face, including the orbital floors and the nasal bridge. And then slide D is a craniofacial separation, which is a uh, oftentimes uh, uh, mortal injury. And moving on from the mid-face fractures is a variant called the ZMC or zygomatical maxillary complex fracture, otherwise known as a ZMC fracture. And this is where the cheekbone oftentimes, oftentimes becomes displaced. And you can see that on the patient's left side, the sinus is clear, while on the right side, there is opacification of the sinus from accumulation of blood, along with interruption of the sinus floor. And a variant, again, on that is the zygomatic arch fracture, where you can see on the x-ray of the patient's right side, the arch is intact, while on the left side, uh, the arch is depressed in a classic W form. Mid-facial fractures also come in a greater severity, where you've got what's called NOE, or nasal orbital ethmoidal injuries, which involve the bridge of the nose and the sinuses behind it and the orbits as well. And this is just a flap taken down from the forehead to approach a... Uh, upper facial fracture. And that particular case, in fact, was a gunshot wound case just like this, with multiple entrance wounds you can see uh, in front of the ear, on the cheek, and also in the forehead she had. More severe gunshot type wound injuries are the shotgun blasts to the face, where not only do you have bony destruction, but massive soft tissue avulsion and loss. And these are just examples of that sort of injury. Temporomandibular joint injuries also become part and parcel, either minor or severe. And this is the advent of a childhood uh, subcondylar fracture, where the joint has become ankylosed with a maximal interincisal opening of approximately 8 to 9 millimeters. In this case, you can see on the slide that the bone becomes fused. And if you look at the panoramic x-ray on the left side, there's complete sclerosis of the right temporomandibular joint, whereas on the patient's left side, over on the right side of the x-ray, he has a normal appearing condyle. The treatment for that at the time was a placement of a costochondral graft, where you take a piece of rib with both bone and cartilage and mortise it into the side of the jaw, establishing a new articular surface. His immediate 
intraincisal opening following surgery was almost 30 millimeters. Another type of dental alveolar injury, less severe than the Lafort fractures, is where you've just got the bony structures that hold the teeth, which are the dental alveolus. And here again is a gunshot wound where the entrance wound is in her upper lip, just above the retractor, where the bullet went down through the mouth, blew out teeth in her upper jaw, entered the tongue, and became lodged in her neck. Here's another dental alveolar injury, another gunshot wound where the entrance wound is in the lip with displacement of the lateral and central incisors posteriorly in the alveolus and the alveolus was just popped back into position and wired into place and we were able to salvage it without loss of teeth. Facial soft tissue injuries getting away from the bony perspective include major lacerations as you can see here. Uh, both the uh, cheek and in the corner of the mouth. And the significant part of this injury is where you've got parotid duct laceration, where there's a catheter uh, threaded through the uh, distal portion of the uh, parotid duct and has to be then threaded into the uh, proximal portion of the duct for ultimate repair. Again, facial soft tissue injuries can be from simple to complex. You can see this is a before and after on an immediate basis, just salvaging as much as possible. And this is a more uh, typical wound where these are uh, uh, done cosmetically as possible each and every time. Uh, and uh, on the uh, left side, you'll see that's just a typical open reduction for mandibular fracture. And the reason you spend your time fixing soft tissue the right way every time is so that when you do cleft work, just like shown in the other slide here, it comes out perfect. And you have cases where you do have deficient soft tissue, such as this, which was a shotgun blast to the side of the face, the evolution of a piece of tissue, which ultimately required a graft from behind the ear to pat the bone. Along with mandibular fractures and facial soft tissue injuries, interorally, you can have massive tongue injuries as well. And this is where you've got an entrance wound into the chin. And that is not a blood clot sitting in the floor of the mouth. That's a huge submucosal hematoma with elevation of the tongue superiorly and posteriorly, which can become a significant airway obstruction. And other unusual types of problems are here. We've got an entrance wound at the left clavicle, which tunneled up through the neck and uh, um, destroyed the patient's larynx and trachea. And uh, in an attempt to intubate this patient, uh, the, the uh, absorbed, I guess is the best term, a significant amount of air through the entrance wound and what you're seeing is what you would think would be swelling is actual subcutaneous emphysema from sucking up air through the entrance and this is what his trachea looked like once he sucked it out. Crush injuries to the face and neck this is a typical motorcycle dashboard you know, you know fall from a building they all look the same it's just what the mechanism, mechanism of injury is and here you've got a uh, combined Lafort 2 fracture on the right with a Lafort 3 fracture on the left, plus bilateral mandibular fractures. The salvage of this case, the most important part was the patient was intubated and given two units of blood 100 miles away from Chicago prior to, to Cook County Hospital. Another gunshot type uh, injury is where you've got avulsion of the portion of the mandible. And this is a typical suicide attempt where the patient blows off uh, the anterior portion of the mandible and the chin is gone and, and the, the anterior maxilla as well. Due to muscle ro re rotation, uh, you can see that the bony fragments are, are tipped outward in the mandible and there's complete bite collapse on both sides. Multiple facial injury requiring general anesthesia. Again, this is the woman I showed you just a minute ago on the opposite side where you can see that exit wounds differ in appearance from entrance wounds. And the, the uh, pathway that they take through the mouth and the rest of the skull causes significant uh, destruction as well. You can see the tongue and the alveolus are torn. Lastly, you've got second and third degree burns of the face and neck, which can also be problematic in that the scarring makes it difficult to um, get mobility and, and be able to access for um, uh, endotracheal intubation and feeding tubes. 
one of the other long-term problems where you got fibrous or bony interference with mandibular movement, as I just mentioned with the burn case, and then this one we're returning back to the young girl who had the mandibular fracture with resultant basis of the mandible. Lastly, a problem that we oftentimes have to deal with is where significant amounts of bone and teeth have been lost, and this is the end result on the shotgun case I showed you just a few minutes ago.